And with that, let's welcome in our NFL analyst, two-time Super Bowl champ Brian McFadden, and on set with me, Leger Dusable. And Leger, I'll start with you because if we focus on just Tom Brady right now, three and four, that's his worst start since 2002, the beginning of that Patriots dynastic run. Uh, my guy Brandon Baylor had referenced it. They were the betting favorites to come out of the NFC. What has changed offensively from then till now? Tommy, this offense is predictable. I mean, if you look at the Carolina Panthers game last week, all they do is motion out Leonard Fournette and go screen right, screen left. And then even when they go 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends, they do heavy play action pass and go up the seam with the football. They essentially use Leonard Fournette like James White in New England. I think they tend to forget when they made that Super Bowl run, it was the run game in Leonard Fournette. Crazy stat, in that 14-12 to 12 game a few weeks ago versus the Green Bay Packers, Leonard Fournette only had 12 carries in a one-score game. 12 carries. Tom Brady threw the ball over 40 times. Last week, only had eight carries. Now, that game didn't get, you know, bad until the fourth quarter. You're telling me Leonard Fournette shouldn't be getting the ball 20-plus times? They essentially threw it to him 10 times. So, um, I don't understand Byron Leftridge and how he's using, you know, Leonard Fournette. And then the continuity on offense. We know this BMAC, right? Momentum is a real thing. Third play of the game, Mike Evans on a post route drops a touchdown pass. That changes and shifts the momentum of the game. Also, the second series of that game, Tom Brady, which I've never seen before in my life, staring down Chris Godwin in a simple uh, uh, cover three concept, almost throws a pick on third down. You just don't see these things from Tom Brady. I think part of the blame is Byron Leverage. They got to do a better job of being more physical and running the football. You got a banged up offensive line. Don't go empty all the time and just expect Brady to throw 50 times and throw for three, 400 yards. And outside of, outside of being predictable, let's keep it real. Injuries have really hampered this season. Offensive line-wise, they came into the season dealing with the injuries on the offensive line. We've seen how that production has been inconsistent based on the injuries. And then you look at the wide receivers, the top four pass catchers, right? Chris Godwin, Evans, Gage, Julio Jones. They have yet to participate with each other. Who, uh, Chris Godwin didn't start the season off because of his ACL. Julio played the first ball game, didn't finish that ball game. He's been missing ever since. Russell Gage has been in and out of the lineup. Mike Evans missed a ball game because of suspension. That's why we haven't seen the, the prolific passing attack that we thought we would see based on the who's of who having to fill the shoes of the superstar players at the wide receiver position. So when you factor all of that into the equation, not to mention talking about being so predictable, can't run the football, all the pressure is now on number 12. He has not been able to deliver because he's working with a second to third class group of guys in regards to the pass catchers. They were 13-point favorites against the Panther team that's in the process of a fire sale right now, and Carolina went on and beat them. By the way, 17.7 points per game right now through seven games for Tom Brady. That is the fewest in any season for him in his career. BMAC, you referenced the injuries, and again, for the second week in a row, we do have a really banged-up Thursday night football, and we'll get to the Ravens in just a second, but if we just focus again on the Buccaneers and that injury report. A lot of injuries to the secondary, BMAC. So when you have a situation where you have a lot of guys like Murphy Bunting, Davis, and Antoine Winfield all out among the other guys as well, how do you manage? How do you bounce back on a short week? Well, luckily enough for the Buccaneers in tonight's matchup, you talk about having three guys missing out of the secondary. They're playing against a run-oriented offense right? It doesn't matter if those guys were healthy. You're going to get a heavy dose of the ground and pound attack from the Baltimore Ravens because that's their offensive identity. So for Tampa, understanding and knowing that it's imperative to force the Ravens to become one dimensional, right? Because if you allow them to be successful running the football, guess what? Nine times out of 10, especially with the injuries in the back end, they're going to have success throwing the football as well. So this is the one ball game, I would say, in regards to Tampa. If you're going to have three guys miss in the secondary, play against the offense that believes in running the football first, second, and third down if possible. Well, BMAC, you're talking about the defensive side. Let's look at the offensive side where this offense has really struggled. Luke Goldie out this game, right? Russell Gage, you talked about it. The four receivers, their top four receivers, haven't been able to play together many games. Only maybe one game this whole season. He's out. Cameron Bray, a guy that uh, Tom Brady truly trusts. Cameron Bray at the tight end position. He's out this game. So this offense probably is going to continue to struggle. They've already had offensive line issues. I think part of the reason why they've gone so much empty is because they want the ball out of Tom Brady's hands so he doesn't get beat up. 
Talking about that secondary, now we know Lamar Jackson has struggled throwing the football the last few weeks of the season, but you've got to be careful. I remember that Miami game, Rashad Bateman, with the speed he has, he took one about 70 to the house on Xavier Howard, and also Devin Duvernay last week had a, a pass over the top for 31 yards. So I think, you know, Greg Roman and his offense will come out. Yes, they want to run the ball and establish the run game, but I think they might take some shots down the field because the secondary is so beat up. It'll be interesting because both Deontay Foreman and Chuba Hubbard rushed for 181 yards in that last week loss at Carolina for Tampa Bay. On the flip side, let's get to the Ravens. They're also banged up. A couple of guys, key questionable status. You bring up Rashad Bateman, obviously Mark Andrews, which a lot of our fantasy guys have him ranked at either number one or number two in the fantasy rankings. If we stick with the skill position players, Leger, and I'll throw it back to you, how important will Mark Andrews be tonight? He's massive. Everybody knows the rapport that Lamar Jackson has with Mark Andrews more, Andrews, more specifically in the red zone. So if he doesn't play Tommy, I look for Josh Oliver, a guy that has been able to be an inline uh, tight end, also being able to split out. I think he takes more of Mark Andrews, Mark Andrews inline tight end position. And Isaiah Likely, a guy they've gotten involved the first two weeks of the season, then kind of went away from. But everybody on this coaching staff really likes him. He's a pass catching tight end. I think he splits out and takes Mark Andrews pass catching ability on the outside. Now, it won't be the same as Mark Andrews because Lamar Jackson has such a good rapport with him. But Isaiah Likely is a mismatch nightmare. Safeties do not want to cover this guy one on one. And then also, Josh Oliver is a guy that's a capable catcher, but also an inline blocker as well. Mark Andrews to the Baltimore Ravens offense is like air to our body. We need it. If we don't have air, we're not going anywhere. We're flatlined. We're pretty much dead. That's who Mark Andrews is to the Baltimore Ravens offense in between the 20s and also in the red zone. He is arguably the best or one of the best tight ends in the National Football League. I think Travis Kelsey would have something to say in regards to that. But he's either one or two, depending on who you're asking. And when he is in the lineup, when he's getting the passes from uh, Lamar Jackson, this offense is better. This offense is better, not to mention what he means in the run game as well. He's a do-it-all type of tight end. And the unique thing about Mark Andrews, guys, when you scout the Ravens, you know that's the guy you need to highlight and know where he is, especially during passing downs. But he still finds ways to create separation. And then some of the other guys, you talk about Bateman and Duvernay, when Mark Andrews is getting things going, that opens the window of opportunity for those guys as well. So he's overly important for their offense. Week in and week out, he shows up. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him show up once again in tonight's matchup. But can we make an argument, guys, and again, if Mark Andrews, let's just say for argument's sake, that Mark Andrews is out or limited, that everything we talked about, how important he is, and I'm going to use, for to be dangerous here, a, a cross-sport reference in basketball. You live by the three, you die by the three. Yeah. You live with Mark Andrews, you die with Mark Andrews. Do, do we put pressure on Greg Roman and Lamar Jackson, Leger, and I'll have you start, because of not diversifying the portfolio, that if you don't have Mark Andrews, you're in big trouble. I mean, even with Mark Andrews, they need to diversify this passing game. It's abysmal, and they've struggled the last three weeks. I mean, Lamar Jackson's only completing 56% of his passes. Now, you talked about it, D-Mac, right? This is a run-first team, right? To open up things for Rashad Bateman and Duvernay, Lamar Jackson, you know, or to open up this run game, Lamar Jackson's going to have to hit some of those passes down the field to Duvernay. He did it last week with a 31-yarder. He also hit Bateman, I think, on a 27-yarder. He's going he's to need three or four of those just to really open up this Bucks defense so they don't put seven or eight guys in the box. Because they do have so much, you know, injuries at the secondary, I don't think they can go a lot of man coverage because Duvernay with his speed and Bateman with his speed, if one guy misses in this man coverage, then it's a home run. But the thing is, Lamar Jackson has been off the last three weeks. I think they come out, uh, Greg Roman, and throw, throw a couple shots down the field just to loosen up this defense. Big, uh, a big get for the Bucks, though. Akeem Hicks, he wasn't there the last few weeks. This defense has struggled against the run. He supposedly is healthy enough to maybe come back this week. I think he gives this defense a big boost, more specifically against the run game. Jay, you said something in regards to the Ravens' offense. In the first few weeks of the season, let's highlight the first three weeks. We saw an aggressive style in regards to throwing the football. Yep. They were taking shots. And remember, everyone was complimenting Lamar Jackson on his deep, his, his deep passes, right? They were so accurate, dead on point, receivers creating separation. And then it seemed to be after week three, they kind of just turned their back on the aggressive nature in throwing the football. In tonight's matchup, we know this is a run for first offense. But with that being said, when you run the football, that play action can be a, a productive play for you and take shots down the football field against a, a secondary that has pretty much me playing in it tonight <laughs> based on all the injuries they're going through. 
Take shots. Lamar Jackson has shown us. Go back and, and look at some of the highlights of the first three weeks of the season. He showed all of us he can be an accurate passer of the football taking deep shots. Put that in the ball game. Stop becoming so generic and, 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 and predictable. Utilize the pass, utilize the play action, and be aggressive. When you're aggressive, it seems to me this offense is much better than when they're not aggressive. And if you don't believe me, the proof is in the pudding. Oh, by the way, I love pudding. Look at the first three weeks compared to what we've seen over the last few weeks and tell me who's right and who's wrong. All right, we'll wait and see how that plays out. And, of course, you no know, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, if healthy fully, will be also important. That could play into your guys' props. So, Leger, I'll start with you. Prop plays for tonight. What do you got? Yeah, a couple prop plays for tonight. If you look at Lamar Jackson and what he's done, he struggled throwing the football. But today, I think he gets it going. Over one and a half touchdown passes. This Bucks defense has allowed a touchdown, two touchdown passes, three out of the last four weeks. Gus Edwards comes back last week from the injury, goes over 44 and a half rush yards. Again, this Tampa Bay defense has allowed three of the last four weeks a running back to go over uh, 44 and a half rush yards. I think Gus Edwards gets, gets going. And Kate Otten, I talked about it. Uh, Cameron Brait is out this game. If you look at what this defense, the Tampa Bay defense, they've struggled against tight ends. David Njoku went over 70 yards. Bellinger from the Giants had a really good day. Hayden Hurst had a really good day for the Cincinnati Bengals. I think Caden uh, Otto goes uh, over, got to remember the number, I think it was 28 and a half yards uh, receiving this, this week. I think they get him in the, involved in the offense. Well, I got a two-player uh, prop for you guys, both running backs. We, we, we go the opposite. I'm going the opposite direction, LeJay, with <laughs> Gus Edwards. I'm taking the under, and here's why. Remember, Gus Edwards' first appearance in a ball game was last week. Remember, he tore his, his ACL last season, finally was healthy, saw double-digit attempts last week, ran the football extremely well, had two touchdowns over 60 yards, if not mistaken. A very, very short week for a guy who just participated in his first ball game. I don't know if we will see the opportunities from Gus Edwards. I don't know if we will see the same volume that we saw in regards to production from Gus Edwards. And if you Baltimore, you don't want to put too much on his plate knowing that he just returned to action. So I take the under in regards to his prop, which is 44 and a hook. And then in regards to, we used to call him playoff Lenny, <laughs> right? Now we just need to call him Leonard. In regards <laughs> to Leonard Fournette, his player prop is 50 and a hook. The Buccaneers have been consistent in a few things. One of those things has been not running the football. They're dead last in totality as a team in rushing yards per game. Playoff Lenny has not been the playoff Lenny this, this season. And because of that, I take the under. I don't expect to see a lot of positive things come from Leonard Fournette. You know why? Because we haven't seen that pretty much all year long. It's not because of who he is as a player. It's mostly because of the offensive line just being so bad. All right, so not playoff Lenny, definitely not Lombardi Lenny. Let's just call him <laughs> Leonard for tonight. Guys, thank you very much for those prop plays for Thursday night football. Time now for Stats That Matter, presented by Penske. When you gain the right transportation partner, your business gains ground. Check this out. The Ravens at 4-3, and three, what could have been if you are part of the flock because they have had at least a 10-point lead in every game this year. We know what the Dolphins game played out. We know how the Bills game played out. And, of course, the one against Brian Dable and the Giants. But they're not the only ones since 2000 to have their first seven games with having at least a 10-point lead. However, you see what the other squads have been able to do. They've been perfect at 7-0. And for some reason, John Harbaugh and his Baltimore Ravens only stand at 4-3. and BMAC, can you shed some light on what we're seeing here as to why the Ravens haven't been able to Keep those leads. Do you put it on the defense, or do you think Lamar and the offense should be stacking more points to make it more comfortable? I think it's a little bit of both. Let's highlight the Baltimore Ravens' defense in regards to the letdowns that we've seen in the second half. They haven't played the Raven-like defense that we have grown accustomed to watching over the last few years. They have allowed big plays, and mostly those big plays happen in situations there that shouldn't even be there. Guys running around scot-free. So you just see a lot of missed assignments from the Ravens secondary specifically in the second half. Now we're starting to see the Ravens get healthier. JPP has been a big addition to their defense in regards to putting pressure on opposing passers. So I think we will see more consistent play in the second half. And oh, by the way, offensively, you know how it is. Usually when offenses have a huge lead in the second half, they tend to drive below the speed limit. They forget the way they got that 
the, the points on the scoreboard was driving above the speed limit. And you don't want to just do something dumb, but yet and still still keep your aggressive hand on the button from time to time in the second half just to let the opposing team know we still got something left in the tank. So I think it's a little bit of both. But me being a defensive guy, you got to find a way to keep that lead in check, especially if you're playing for the Ravens. Ravens catching two points, the total at 46. Leger, I'll start with you. Where are you going? Taking the Ravens plus two, this line has gone back and forth. I think it changed right before we came up here because it seems like Mark Andrews most likely won't play. But I still like this run attack from the Baltimore Ravens. The, the Bucks got punched in the mouth last week by the Carolina Panthers, of all people. We talked about the injuries in the secondary. I believe Greg Roman dials up some shots. They get one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. I think he takes a shot to Devin DuVernay or even also um, Rashad Bateman. Uh, down the field. I think the Ravens come in cover. Also, remember, Jason Pierre-Paul, revenge game, was with the Tampa Bay Bucks. They did not sign him back. He's eager and came out in the papers and said he's ready to, re to let Tampa Bay know what they forgot. But Jay, I love the fact that you're taking the side because I'm attack attacking the total. Give me the under. It's set at 46 right now. I take the under because everyone is hurt. All the key contributors probably will be on the sideline. And Lord knows if Mark Andrews don't play, oh, my goodness. <laughs> remember I said he is the heir to the body yep. of the Baltimore Ravens? Ooh, you remember Weekend at Bernie's? Man, there might be a lot of Weekend at Bernie's like bodies floating around that football field if Mark Andrews is not in the lineup. And even if he is, he might not be 100% healthy. It's safe to say he won't. I think points will be very, very difficult for the Baltimore Ravens. And we talked about all the injuries for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's going to be difficult for them. They've been dealing, having issues scoring points when they've been pretty much healthy, to say the least. So I think this is going to be one of those Thursday night ball games that we have all complained about. But as a de <laughs> former defender, I'm okay in seeing, especially when I have my coins set on the under. That's why we have uh, sports betting and fantasy to keep us yeah. engaged. Guys, uh, appreciate you very much with the look at Thursday night football. BMAC, certainly appreciated. Uh, Leger, you referenced the line movement to this game. Here's a chart of how it's kind of been all up and around with Tampa Bay originally laying the three. Ravens have alternated wins and losses this season. Now, Tom Brady's 8-4 and four all time against the Ravens, but currently in a five-game ATS losing streak, which is tied for second longest of his career. b has got that podcast with Patrick Peterson, all things covered. He twice previews the Kings matchup with his former team and reacts to the Packers' struggles and answers listeners' mailbag questions. BMAC and Patrick Peterson, download and scan that QR code today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.